Okay, now for M1 January 2020, International A level. Question number one. This is a mechanics paper, and the question here is about momentum and impulse. Okay, so in this question, we're told about two particles, P and Q, of mass M1 and M2, respectively, and they're moving on a smooth horizontal plane. The particles are moving towards each other in opposite directions along the same straight line when they collide directly. Immediately before the collision, both particles are moving with the speed u. The direction of motion of each particle is reversed by the collision, and immediately after the collision, the speed of q is a third u. Find in terms of m1, sorry, of m2 and u, the magnitude of the impulse exerted by p on q in the collision. So let's make a clear diagram first showing the particles p and q it doesn't matter where you draw them so let's call this p and call this q call this m1 yes p is m1 respectively q is m2 let me make that a bit neater that's better okay so m1 and m2 now we'll put what's happening before the collision above and what's happening after the collision below <clears throat> so this is after all right so now before the collision they're both moving towards each other with the speed of u okay so that's the speed after the collision q has reversed its direction and going at the speed of a third u. Whereas P, we know it's reversed its, its motion, but it's going with the speed that we don't know. Let's call it the final speed of P. We don't know what that is. Okay, now for part A, we've got to find in terms of M2 and U the magnitude of the impulse exerted by P on Q. By P on Q. So basically, the impulse exerted by P on Q will act in this direction, and it will cause P to change its motion okay so the change of momentum of q will equal the impulse that it received basically okay so the impulse is equal to the change of momentum so it's the mass times the final velocity minus the initial velocity so in this case the impulse is going to be the mass which is m2 times the final velocity now i'm going to take this direction as positive okay it doesn't matter which way you take as positive i'm taking that way as positive so I'm going to have the final speed, which is a third u, which will be positive. Why did I put negative? I said positive. A third u. And you're going to have... Sorry about that. That's a third u. Um, minus, okay, the initial speed, which is going in this direction. So it's minus minus u. Okay, because this is negative. Okay, initial, initially it was going towards what we call negative. So the impulse is going to be given by m2 times a third u plus u. So it's a, third, a third plus one is four over three. So m2 times four over three u, which gives you four m2 u over three. Okay, so that's in terms of m2 and u, and that's going to be a newton meters per second squared. Sorry, meters per second. Okay. And that's the answer. Sorry, kilogram. What am I talking about? Newton seconds or kilogram, kilograms, kilogram meters per second. Okay. All right. So that is the impulse. All right. Now, find in terms of m1, m2, and u the speed of p immediately after the collision. Okay, so we can do this in two ways, actually. We could use the conservation of momentum, find the total momentum before and the total momentum after, and we know that they're both equal. Or we could use the fact that we know the magnitude of the impulse. So the magnitude of the impulse that's acting on P would act in this direction. Okay, and that would be the change of momentum. So we can say that basically, if we use the, the, the impulse, we could say, that the change of momentum of P, which is going to be negative, according to our diagram, negative 4 m2 
2u over 3 is equal to um, the change in momentum, which is the mass times the initial velocity, so it's m1 times the initial velocity, uh, sorry, final velocity, which is vp, minus the initial velocity, which is u. Okay, we've got to find the speed of p, the speed of p, not the velocity of p, the speed of p, that's important. So now let's just um, simplify this. You have minus 4 m2u over 3. In fact, let's just do something to make it a, a bit easier. Let's get rid of the fraction. Let's multiply both sides by 3. So you have minus 4 m2u equals 3 m1, and I'll multiply this out at the same time, vp, and 3 m1 minus 3 m1 um, u. Okay? Now remember, we want to make this a subject. So I have um, basically, yeah, we're going to have 4 m2u plus 3 m1u. Okay, so you're going to have basically 3 m1u minus 4 m2u is equal to 3 m1vp. Let me continue here, although really it's better for you to continue that way. Uh, we can then divide both sides by um, 3m, 3m1. So vp will equal 3m1u minus 4m2u over 3m1. Now, now what we're going to do here is, okay, so now... This is the velocity of p. They've asked us for the speed of p. Now, if you think very carefully about this, okay, this velocity that we're going to have is a negative value because it's going towards what we call the left, okay, what we call negative. We call the left negative, the right positive. So our value that we're going to get for our speed is going to be a negative value. What we need to find is the magnitude of this velocity, okay, which will basically be the, you know, the, the positive version of this. So we just have to change the sign. So you're going to be, this is going to be 4 m2u, sorry, 4 m2u minus 3 m1u. Over 3 m1. Just change its sign because we want to find the speed. This is now the speed of the particle not its velocity. It's just like, for example, if we had a, a question and our answer came out as, for example, minus 5 meters per second, and the question said find the speed, and that would be uh, the velocity, we would say it's 5 meters per second, okay, in the direction has been reversed, okay, we will say something like that, for example, okay, but we'd keep the magnitude of the speed, and just we would mention the, the fact that it's the direction has been reversed. In this case, we know that the direction has been reversed. That's why we know that, according to our calculations, it must be a negative value for, this, for the velocity. So the speed is going to be a positive value. So to make that positive, we find its magnitude, which in, in just basically changes change its sign. It's, it's going to end up being a positive value then. Then it says, hence show that m2 is greater than 3 quarters m1. So let's take our um, our velocity, what we said. So we know that our velocity, 3m1u minus 4m2u over 3m1 is the velocity. Okay, and we know that the velocity of this particle is negative according to our calculations. Because our, according to our diagram, it's negative because it was going in the direction we call positive and then it changed direction. So I know for sure that this must be less than zero. Now, to solve this inequality, what we have to do is get rid of this denominator. So we multiply both sides by 3m1. Now, multiplying an inequality, um, both sides of an inequality by a number is dangerous, okay, because a sign may change. And if it's unknown, it's a problem. But as mass can only be positive, we're multiplying by a positive value. So there's no problem here by multiplying both sides by 3m1, the inequality will not change its direction. So you'll end up with 3m1, 3m1u, sorry, 
m1u minus 4m2u is less than 0. Another way you can think about it is this is definitely positive, and if the whole fraction is less than 0 negative, then this part must be the negative part. Okay, because negative and positive will give us something less than zero. Anyway, here we have uh, this, which we can then rearrange. We have to make m2 the subject of this inequality. So you have 3m1u is less than 4m2u. We can get rid of the u's. So we can divide both sides by 4. So we have 3, oops, 3 over 4. We have 3 over 4 m1 is less than m2, which means m2 must be greater than 3 over 4 m1, okay, which is what we had to show. And there we have the answer to question number 1.